Hi, my name is Henry Egloff and I'm going to show you how to code a basic web page using HTML. So I'm going to show you some step-by-steps but I'm also going to explain a lot of the theory and the concepts behind what I'm doing. So this tutorial is part of a series of tutorials that I'm going to put together and it's really about just providing a really basic introductory foundation to coding for the web. So before I forget, um, I've written everything up as an article on my website, so I'll include a link to this in the YouTube description, as well as any links or anything like that that I refer to in this tutorial. So I'm just going to jump right in. Um, so the first thing I wanted to talk about was, you know, the basic concept of HTML, you know, so what is HTML exactly? So if, for example, I visit a web page in the browser, and here I've got the um, Google uh, web page open, and I just simply write, I, I'm using Chrome, by the way. Um, so if I right click and go view page source, right at the very top here, it says doc type HTML, and it's got what I'm going to talk about in more detail later, which is an opening HTML tag. So basically, this is an HTML formatted document. So uh, you might be familiar already with other document formats, like say, for example, .doc for a Word doc or .jpg for a JPEG file. So in this case, what we're looking at is .html, an HTML document. So when you're starting off, of course, code like this can just look like, oh my god, this is all gobbledygook, I'm definitely going to be starting with some really, really ultra simple code just to get things going. And it's also worth noting that in terms of a web page, whilst the main document format is HTML, there are other scripting or coding languages that are incorporated within the HTML. Um, in particular, some of the main ones are CSS and JavaScript. And these different languages serve different roles, and I'm going to talk about those in more detail a bit later. But the purpose of this particular tutorial is to really focus on the, the real foundation language, which is HTML. So the way I describe HTML is as being the language of the content and structure of a web page. So the content would be things like the title, you know, text, lists, images, video, things like that. Um, and the other language which you'll start using next, which is CSS, is really the language of style, which is about how this content is presented on the web page, like what color it is, what kind of background it has, what size it is, how it's positioned on the web page, and things like that. So the, f the next thing I, I was going to talk about was HTML structure. And I just thought I would show you something um, just to give you a bit of an idea. So here I have a basic text document that I've created in Google Docs. And like I've, I've created like a document header and I've got a main title and a paragraph of text and some... Uh, list items and I've also got like a document footer down here. So I had been coding for the web for quite a while before it really sunk into me that a lot of the terminology to do with coding websites is actually based off you know typical document formatting terminology things like lists, titles, you know footers, headers, things like that. So I, I think it's worth keeping that in mind. Um, that that is definitely very relevant when we're talking about the structure of the HTML content. So the next thing I was going to talk about was coding tools. So you know basically to code a web page you're going to need some sort of code editing tool. So where I teach we tend to use this one called Notepad++ and you'll find links to this on my website. Um, and in the YouTube description. So um, 
Notepad++ works really well in my teaching environment. As far as I know, it's a Windows-based program and it, it really works very well as a basic code editor. And in fact, what we like to do is we like to start our students off with uh, using a really, really basic code editor um, that doesn't include things like code hinting as a way of encouraging our students to really learn to write the code from scratch to begin with before using some of the uh, more advanced um, code editing features. So this can be a good one to use, particularly if you're on Windows and as far as I know it's free. Now another one that um, some of my students really like is this one called Atom. So um, as far as I know this is a, um, a free text editor, sorry uh, another free coding editor and um, I believe it works for Windows as well as Mac. Now the one that I use is this one called Sublime Text. So um, currently you can buy this one for an $80 license. But what you can also do is you can download it and you know try out using it for free. And what it does is it gives you a little you know prompt to buy a license, I think every 10 saves or something like that. So you can really have a chance to use the program before you decide whether you want to buy it or not. I bought a license for this quite a few years ago and I've been really, really happy with it. And I guess I've just tended to stick with it uh, as this type of tool. Um, I thought I would also mention that there are other tools you can use, like say things like CodePen, uh, where you can code straight into the cloud. So you can basically code things for the web and have them viewable straight on the web. Um, and, and CodePen is certainly a very cool place to start looking and seeing what um, people are doing with code. Uh, you can see examples of things people are doing with code and then you can, you can look at those examples and see, you know, basically see the code that they're using to create those examples. Um, but I, I wouldn't recommend starting here. Um, I would recommend starting with coding websites, um, basic websites offline. And I'm going to talk a bit more about that in a second. So, yeah, plenty of coding tools available. Um, next thing I wanted to mention was useful references. So, I might just close some of these now. Oh, another one I forgot to mention is Dreamweaver. This is part of the Adobe Creative Suite. So if by chance you're already using Adobe, you might want to use this tool. It's a very sophisticated tool. Um, and it, you know, it, it works quite well. Um, yeah, so as far as um, useful references go, I would highly recommend w3schools.com. Like really, I think that this website just outlines everything you would need to know to get started with coding for the web. And it's really well organized, you know, into different sections like learn HTML, learn CSS. Like this is where I would be starting today, learn HTML. So when I click on learn HTML, it just, you know, you could really just work your way through everything here. Uh, the main reason why I wanted to create these tutorials was because, like I said before, I just wanted to explain some of the basic concepts um, behind all this sort of stuff that we're working with. Like, th this website is great because it, you know, explains the code and it's got examples of the code, but I, I think that sometimes some of these things can be sort of explained in sort of um, a different type of language or, or a more simplified kind of language which is what I'm hoping to do here. So yeah, certainly refer to w3schools.com. Um, and, and if you sort of work your way all through this, um, it's got a section in here somewhere. I've just got to try and find it. I've got a link for it on my website, like a how-to section. And that's, um, that's really good because it's got, oh, here, here it is. It's kind of got, usually I find that my students are really keen to start, you know, putting more interesting elements in their website. So here it's got things like 
you know, image sliders over here, you can see things like icon bars and stuff like this. So I, I think that once you get up and running, it's worth having a look in the how to section. So I'll just go back to the HTML section. So the next thing I was going to mention is file management. And this is actually a really big thing. I, I sometimes find that uh, I'm working with students that really have um, terrible file management skills. And this is significant because, you know, when you're creating websites, you know, your, your code is referring to pathways to other files and other directories. And, you know, you really have to have a strong idea of what's happening with your files and your directories and how they relate to each other. Um, when you, what I would sort of say is a good place to start is to create a folder on your computer and just create three empty folders in there, one called CSS, one called images and one called JS, which is short for JavaScript. This is sort of a fairly standard um, formula because, um, you know, as you move along, you can start putting things into these folders and you'll put your website file in the root directory and everything will relate to each other and everything will work within the one sort of directory. So um, if you're not good at file management, you're, you're really going to have to um, start getting a grip on that. And so uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about was the difference between creating an offline website and an online website. So we're going to start creating by creating an offline website, which means that we can visit this web page in our browser and it has like an address to the file as it is on our computer, you know. Uh, so that that's different to when you're viewing a website on the on the web, you know, and it has like a typical sort of web address. Um, So the other thing I wanted to talk about was, you know, file naming. And like I created this example here where I called it example file name with spacing. And I think you probably saw that I had that open here before. Here, this, in this case, I, I named the directory with spaces in the name. And like when I look up here and I look at the path, you can see that I've got every, everywhere where there's a space, it's put in these um, other characters as a way of kind of representing that space in the path to that file. So I've written some general kind of guidelines on my website, but the main thing that you want to do is you want to stick to, um, I think it's a good habit to write all your, your file names and directory names in lowercase, and if you've got um, more than one word, hyphenate it. And um, sometimes, generally, you have to be sure to include the extension of a file. So if you've got something like an image file that's a JPEG, you know, you have to have .jpg after it. If you want your file to be recognized as an HTML file, it has to have .html at the end of it and so forth. So, um, and the other thing I was going to talk about was the index file. So typically the way you'd start off is you create an index file and when you have an index file in a directory on the web, if you visit that directory, the pathway to that directory, the index file is opened by default. And I've got some notes about this in my website, but you remember when I was talking about how website files tend to, uh, website documents tend to follow the language of, you know, things like text-based documents. You can think about something like the index of a book where what the purpose of the index is, to, it is to sort of, you know, outline the contents that's in the book. Um, so, you know, an index file is generally the same as your home page of your website. It's kind of the page that's really about outlining what this, what this whole web page is about. So, I'm going to get started now. So I've got um, my code editor open, which is Sublime Text. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to the HTML 
section and here I'm just going to cut ahead a little bit. They've got the code for a basic website, web page there I should say. And I'm going to copy that code and then I'm just going to go to my code editor and paste it in. And I'm going to save this into that folder that I created and I'm just going to call it index oops index.html now what you want to do is you want to you've got the two views of this document one is the view of the code but you can also open this code in your browser in sublime text it's easy you just do right click view in browser otherwise what you will most likely have to do is actually visit the file on your computer and depending on how your computer is set up chances are if you just simply double click on that file it will open it up in the browser and so this is what that the actual web page looks like now notice up here it's got the page title it's got this is a heading and this is a paragraph and so if I look at my code I can see these parts of it now What I wanted to talk about was the, the structure of HTML and this is, this is really, really important. So see at the very start here how I've got, this is called a tag and this is the, what you would call the opening HTML tag. And see down here we've got the same tag but it's got a slash in front of the word HTML and that is the closing HTML tag. So basically there's a system here of structure where everything between the, those two HTML tags is basically defined as HTML or you might even want to say it belongs to the HTML definition. And similarly here we've got like a little section here where we've got a head and we've got um, a title tag within it and here we've got a, a bo two body tags, an opening and closing body tag and we've got um, two elements inside that. So here we've got like a, an H1 tag, which is basically stands for heading one, which is the main heading, the primary heading of the page. And then we've got a P, which is a paragraph tag, which defines a paragraph. So I would, just to keep it really, really simple, I would say that the stuff between the two head tags is not stuff that is visible in the body of your web page, like in the actual page itself. But we did note that the page title is shown. So like I can, you know, obviously I can go back and change that title, you know, my page, page title. And if I save this document, I'm just file save, and then I go back to the browser and hit refresh, you can basically when I change the code, save it, come back to the browser and refresh, it will show the changes that I've made. You know, um, you know, you might have a heading like, I don't know, about me or something like that. And I again okay, just save it and I just did um, a keyboard shortcut for save and I'll come back here and do refresh. So there we go. So particularly when starting out, I think it can be really good to um, indent the code. Like so, in this case, I just I just hit tab in in the line um, in the line of code because I think it, it becomes really useful because you can really sort of see the structure of the content. And I just want to talk about this a little bit more in more detail. Um, just to really describe how this sort of structuring works. So, on my on, on my web page here, I created this example, um, which is this is definitely not valid code, but I'm just using this as, as an example for how you could say use this sort of uh, method of structuring to really define the structure of say something like a house. So here, for example, I have an opening house tag and a closing house, which basically defines everything inside it as belonging to the house. And, you know, I've got a wall and within my wall element, I've got a door. Within the door, I've got a door handle and I've also got a window element within the wall. 
So just say, for example, I wanted to say, talk to this wall element with code and say, I want to position um, this wall at this position. These elements here that are inside this element automatically inherit the properties of its parent element, in this case, the wall element. So you can kind of see that that's how the structure works. It's really just a simple system of opening and closing tags and what you might call sort of nesting elements, like nesting elements within each other. And, and there's no sort of rules for how deep you can go with this, but this is the basic format for how you're structuring the document. So back here to my document, notice how my H1 tag appears bigger and bolder than my paragraph tag. So this is because what the browser is doing is it is applying default styling to these elements based on what kind of elements they are. So, so th sometimes this can be a little bit of a headache for web designers because the different browsers will sometimes present elements a little bit differently. And there are methods that um, can be used to get around this. I've got a few links about this in the um, tutorial. But I, I thought I would just show you one sort of thing. If I right click in Chrome and go inspect, this is actually a really useful tool. Uh, sometimes I think it's probably a little bit advanced for someone that's starting out. But it's got this uh, little tool here where I can select an element on the page and highlight it. And I mean, there's interesting stuff happening here too. See how my heading tag has kind of like this space above and below it. Um, that's called padding and I'll talk about that um, at a later stage. But if I click on the element, it's showing me all this styling that is applied to it, like the, the, the font size and these margins. And again, you, you'll start to learn this when you learn HTML, but you can see here that it says user agent style sheet. And basically what it's saying is this is what the browser is using to render this by default. So like I said before, it can be a little bit of a headache for um, web designers when things appear differently in different browsers. I, my sort of take on it is I tend to just piggyback off the browser um, default styling. And if I have sort of any major problems between different browsers, I address that just specifically for, for that element later on. But for now, I don't think you need to worry too much about that. But the other thing that's interesting about this <clears throat> is that the browser default styling can really help you really kind of see what the element is. So the, the next thing I was going to get you to do, um, apart from just editing the content of the web page, was to go to HTML and go to lists, and we're just going to put in a really simple, simple list. And as you can see, this website, it's got so much information in it. You know, there are different kind of lists you can use and different ways they can be presented. But I'm just going to copy and paste the code for this list here. I'm going to go back to my code editor and I'm going to paste it in. And I'm going to be sure to put it between the body tags and I'm going to put it under that um, paragraph tag there. In fact, I'm, you know, what I might do is just even copy and paste that paragraph and go, this is a list. and save it and I'll go back to my browser, find that one and refresh it. So there's my list. So you can see that by default, the browser is actually rendering that like a list with um, bulleted, it's what you'd call a bulleted list. It's an unordered list and that's what is represented here by the UL. If I wanted it to be an ordered list, as in a numbered list, I could just change that to OL. Now. All of this sort of language is just stuff that you're going to have to learn as you go along. I guess it's like learning, a, you know, a spoken language like Spanish or French or something like that. You just, you just have to learn it. So there we go. So I think that this is, um, I've covered a lot of topics here, and I think that this is actually a really good place to stop in this um, demonstration. 
my experience is that a lot of students want to instantly jump in and start doing the fun stuff which is like putting images in there and links and putting a background color and changing the style of the text and all that kind of stuff um, but that's stuff I'm going to leave for another tutorial so um, like I said I've got all these notes on my website and I'll include a link if you want to look at that stuff I've also got other tutorials on my website too so I'm going to leave it there for now um, yeah, thank you. Bye.